JReport Designer is a 100% Java, swing-based report design tool that facilitates rapid report creation, testing, and publishing. Here we see a banded object report that has been built in JReport Designer. We are viewing the report in Designer using the View tab, which shows the developer what the end result will look like at runtime. The other tab is the Design tab, where we can see the formatting objects of the report. Banded object reports present query result data in an easy-to-understand format that resembles a table. Each row or band of the report represents a header, footer, detail, or detail grouping band. Our banded object report provides sales data broken down by product category for our fictional coffee distribution company. Each time the report is run, the latest sales data is pulled in and used to update the sales totals of each product category. The report will automatically expand to accommodate the number of products retrieved from the DBMS without being rebuilt. Let's take a look at how easy JReport makes it to create this report. All report layouts can be built with the report wizards or by drag and drop. We'll use the wizard. To create a new report, we'll begin by selecting one of the eight report layout options. In this case, we've selected a standard banded report. The wizards present six aspects of the report being built, allowing you to focus on each area independently. First, you'll need to specify the data source. In this case, we'll select an imported SQL query from which the report will be populated. The imported SQL query has already been set up and saved in another area of JReport Designer. The imported SQL can be to any JDBC or ODBC data source. Data sources can be from XML files, text files, Java objects, web services, or almost anything else which can return a list of data values. Since we want to show only group data, we do not need to place any values into the detail section, and therefore it will automatically be hidden at runtime. We can skip the detail panel of the wizard. We want to show sales data totaled at the product and product category levels so we will define these groups accordingly on the group panel. We will then use the built-in summary function applied to the sales totals fetched from the database and add this function field to both group headings on a report. This is done in the summary panel of the wizard. We will skip over all except the first one in the video. Other commonly used functions are available count, average, maximum, and so on. In our case, the same summarizing formula is used in both headers as it dynamically totals at whatever level it is placed, as shown by the break field value on the panel. While the report data has been fully defined, we'll now specify a style for it by choosing one from the list of predefined styles. For this report, we'll go with a JReport demo style. We'll let the wizard create the report for us now by clicking the Finish button. The initial report has been created, and now we'll use other areas of JReport Designer to fine-tune our report layout and behavior. We can change anything that was created by the wizard, or add new objects. First, we will add some labels to the report heading, and as you can see, we simply drag and drop report objects from the toolbox, and for labels we can edit them in place. We could also drag and drop data-dependent objects from the resource view, which is populated by the imported SQL script. One of the interesting report objects on this report is the rank object. The rank object displays a graphic based on the numerical value of a DB field or a calculated value. In this case, the rank will be based on a calculated value, the percent variance, which is the percentage of the difference between actual and forecasted sales. This calculated value will be tested against a range of static values and display the graphic for that range. To set up the ranks, we select the percent variance field and right-click to begin the rank definitions. The first graphic we specify is for the default image, that is, the image that appears when the variance percentage does not fall into any of the ranges we are testing for. We browse to and select NoRank.GIF. Next we set up the ranges of the rank by entering the minimum and maximum values and assigning an image to represent each range. 
We've selected a red circle icon with an X in it, if the actual sales were under projected sales, and a green check mark icon if they are above projected sales. The images use multiple icons for values that lie progressively farther from the target in either direction. Once the ranking parameters have been set, we add them to the list and click on OK. The ranks do not show in display view, but we'll see them in a moment when we preview the report. When creating reports, users can also apply conditional formatting to highlight specific data. In this case, we want to highlight the percent variance between forecasted and actual sales, the same value we based our rank object on. To do this, we'll right-click on the percent variance field and select conditional formatting. We'll set the background color for the field to green for all positive variances and orange for all negative variances greater than or equal to 20%. Once we've finished adding our parameters, we click OK to apply them to the report. Using the View tab to preview our report allows us to see how the report layout looks with data, and it looks good. We can see how the images in the rank column give visual cues as to which percent variances fall below or exceed projected sales. Similarly, we can see how the percent variances that are greater than zero are shown with a green background, while those with negative values of 20% or higher are displayed with an orange background. Each refresh of data at runtime causes the ranks and conditional formatting to be retested and adjusted if necessary.